Hey, 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 it's me, Alana with McKenzie's Clubhouse. I am coming up or creating our culminating event for my math munchkins for the summer. We're coming upon our last session. This is the last week of learning. And so um, bi-weekly we have done, um, or I guess bi-monthly, we have done like culmination um, activities. And so these were just assessment pieces that I used, but they were fun. So I just so happen to have one in my office right now, but we did like a painting with a twist and this particular one we did greater than and less than. So I used it to assess their understanding of greater than and less than. And then they were able to choose their colors um, according to greater than and less than and um, kind of paint their canvas. And so um, I have three math babies. The Lord saw fit to give me three this, um, this uh, summer session. And so um, I try to do engaging activities to kind of make the kids want to come and learn. Like I am big on engagement that's like one of my jush of education um so anyway the last event that we're going to do is like a breakout room and it's done actually with lock boxes um and so i have my lock boxes here well that's not a lock box but i have my different locks here um, I'm going to create some clues so that the kids can like go around um, the yard and within the clubhouse to um, solve these math problems. And inside the box will be math problems. And then in the last lock box, well, let me back up. Sorry. So what they'll do is they'll get a clue. Okay. So each kid gets a clue. I give them that clue. That clue tells them where to go um, within the yard. Um, around the house or in the clubhouse, excuse me, to search for their lockbox. It could be a lockbox or um, some will be Ziploc bags, but there's some type of lock on it. And so with that, they will have to solve a problem with each clue in order to get the combination or the key for the next box. I'm just making a whole mess over here. So the, this is one of the locks um, that I have. And then I have um, multiple other type locks. I have padlocks, I have combination locks. And so as they're solving these problems, they'll get the code to the locks. And then from there, they'll get another clue that will lead them to another lock box. And so this is an assessment measure that you can use as a teacher, but it makes it fun and engaging, okay? And so um, one group, we're working on multiplication facts. And so in that lockbox, there could be build or array, or there might be tools in there for them to create equal groups or a tape um, strip. There are different things that they will have to do in order to get the clue for the next um, round. I mean, for the next portion of it. And at the end, the last lockbox always has a great treat in it. So um, it's usually candy or a snack or something like that. So I am going to go ahead and get started um, and I will be back to let you guys know um, how it fares. So I want to kind of tell you some of the tools that are things that I have. If you've watched my reels, you've seen um, some of these things that I got from the dollar store. These are just like Lego boxes. Um, these are some dies. I actually have some note cards that I'm gonna use for the clues. Um, modeling clay numbers that I've purchased from the Dollar Tree. Got this from the Dollar Tree. This is a reusable dry erase packet. I have some um, clothes pins, some gigantic clothes pins. I have rope. Um, I have etch and, etch and sketch. And then I'll use, of course, paper and pencil. And like I said, this first one, this first um, breakout room that I am creating is based around multiplication. I have another one for greater than and less than. And then I have a little, little munchkin that we've been working on ordinal numbers, addition and subtraction, and um, greater than and less than under 10. So like I said, I'll take all of those concepts and embed them in, and then they will um, actually uh, use them to solve the problems. So the first thing you want to do is determine how many actual lock boxes you're using. I have five lock boxes here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. 
six locks that I'm going to use. And I think I'm going to add another lock. So I bought some other locks. Um, so maybe, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six locks, seven locks. How about seven locks? Seven locks. Okay, so we have seven locks. And so I have only five lock boxes. So that means that I'll have two Ziploc bags that I will use. So that tells me that I need actually eight clues. So I'm going to create eight clues and those each of those clues will have at the top a riddle to actually tell the kids where to go. And then after the riddle, they have to solve the problem in order to get the key or to get to the next station in order to get that key to open up that box so that they can um, so that they can solve the next riddle. Okay, so that's the first place that we're starting. This first, these first lock boxes that I am doing are all surrounded around multiplication. And so we have learned um, a lot of strategies um, in solving multiplication problems. And so I'm going to embed the basic concepts of multiplication. Um, I'm going to ask him how to solve multiplication um, how to solve multiplication problems. We're gonna do some word problems and some actual memory work too, okay? All right, so I am on my sixth box. This box is really going to be probably the most um, challenging box of all of them. So it's going to incorporate a word problem. From that word problem, um, the student will have to create or use the information from the word problem to create an equation. When he or um, the, the kid creates that equation, they're going to use the rope, these um, clothespins, and numbers to create a number line to solve the equation. And so using number lines to solve equations tend to be very hard for kids, but this little boy, he's very intelligent. So I have to give him things that'll bump it up a notch. So I'm real interested to see how he solves um, this um, problem using these materials. So I'll make sure I go live when he does it. All right. So I just wanted to give you guys an idea. I am on box number six. Those These materials will go inside of here. And she's done. Okay, so let's look in one of the toolboxes or lock boxes. So inside this one, it doesn't have much but two dice um, and the lock that I'm going to put on the outside. So when the kids get the box, it's actually locked and it has, uh oh, I don't know if this fits. I'll get that in, but it has this lock on here. And so they have to actually read the clue that goes with it. This is the last box. So it doesn't have a clue in it. It'll actually have a um, treat inside of it. But this is clue number one, which I will hand to them. He or she will open up the clue. And you see there are dice in this one too. So it's like full circle. They'll have to read the clue and do what the uh, clue tells tell them to do. So um, here's another one. You see the lock is already on this one. And then these, this is another box. <clears throat> this has a number tape number strip on it and it has the clue inside the etch a sketch that they're going to use to write the equation so each of the boxes are different um i'll go through each of them really quick this is another box and this is missing the chips but this one is equal groups and here's an example of a clue so it says, hey you, it's time to use the math tools to create equal groups, four times 11. So they would take the manipulatives that are in here. And like I said, these um, boxes are in here and I'm going to put a handful of chips in here and he would have to model for me four equal groups of 11. Once he does that, then he can go on to read the next clue. It says, great time and go ahead to the place where people ring the bell to death. And I probably should have used something a little bit more jing, uh, 
ringy or, or, or rhymy or whatever I'm trying to say than that. But that's a clue and that's the doorbell. And so at the doorbell, he would find the next box and he would open that box to get the clue installed. And so inside this one, he's creating an array and there is the Play-Doh or clay. And then in this last box, there is a clue. And I think that that's, I don't know what's in there. <laughs> Let me look. I don't know what he has to do. It's probably a word problem. Let's see. Yes, he just has to solve seven times um, five. Okay. So anyhow, and then we have these here. So that's basically it. This is um, your lock box or what we call breakout room. There are different boxes they have to break through. I normally time them um, and give them uh, like 60 minutes to do it. They work in teams to solve through it. It's a very fun activity. It's an assessment piece for the teacher, but it's very engaging for the kids. Like I told you, my babies, they love me. I think because I'm an awesome teacher, but they always say, Miss Miolana plays the best games. I'm always thinking of how can I make something engaging and fun for them so that they are getting the concepts and it also gives me a measurement of what I need to work on and what they have mastered. So hopefully you have enjoyed this. If you have, like Peach says, show me a likey like or give me a likey like, click the like button and subscribe. See you soon.